Listen, it does not need to be a new year, a new you. It just needs to be a new year, a healthier you. Because sure, okay, they trying to take us down at every front. So get some TLC products and up that metabolism and up that energy and up that immune system, okay? That digestive system. Get that all together with these TLC products right here. And don't forget, okay, sign up for ifyoucanmove.com and become a part of the online gym and shed the pounds, honey. We are hey, everybody, what's up? It's your girl, Bondi Blue, and I am back for another Growing Up Hip Hop Atlanta review. I thought I would be more excited when I said that because that's usually like the mood that I try to be in. But Growing Up Hip Hop Atlanta, it, it, Atlanta is not given. It's not really given like that. And I want it to give. I wish it was. I mean, y'all are watching the reviews. But to, to, to be honest, I feel like when I'm watching it, like, I'm like, you know. So, like, the episode starts off where the last one left off. So, you know, Deb is in her feelings and butt hurt because Brett and Bow Wow are there before she wanted them to be. And everybody's kind of discussing how they don't know if they want to do this project with her. And it's weird that she would even think that Brett and Bow Wow, the legends, would want to do a song with, you know, Johnny Blaze and Kai. You know, these nobodies. You know, or as Deb would call them, the underdogs, okay? I like to work with the underdogs. And then she calls out a whole bunch of people that are not underdogs. Uh, Nicki Minaj, Gucci Man, Waka Flocka. I was just kind of like, oh, those people were underdogs? Oh. I mean, they, they, they probably haven't been in a very long time. So good for you, Deb Adney. But either way, she was upset, right? Brett blows up. And then the thing that kills me about Brett is that Brett acts like Deb was the only one on one. It's like, no, bitch, you was on one as well. Let's not act like you weren't going at her neck about who you are. Like, we don't know who you are. But the point that Deb was trying to make was that none of y'all, Diamond, Pimpin' from the Franchise Boys, or Brett and Bow Wow have come out with anything substantial in a decade. Anything substantial in a decade, okay? So that means since 2010, we have not heard anything really from any of you people. And Diamond felt some type of way because she's like, I have music, okay? Diamond is a solo artist, okay? When you think about Atlanta rap women, you think about Diamond. I'm like, I think about Crime Mob, Diamond and Princess. That's what I think about Diamond. I want to think about you as yourself alone, but the only time I seem to think about you yourself alone is, you know, when you're fooling with some other rapper, you know, like when you were fooling with Soulja Boy and then when you were fooling with Scrappy. Like, that's when I think about you by yourself. But other than that, I always think of you and Princess together, okay? And not to be confused with Prinky, Ray J's Princess, okay? No, we talking about Princess the Rapper, okay? Listen, I'm not gonna do it, but I want to. Get crunk. Holding that down when you see me because I'm coming to fresh. One with the willis, you feel me? So you should call me the best. I can't look jazzy and nasty with my stiletto heels on. But if a hoe say something, trust me, then her hair will get thrown. I'm turning heads left and right. Who so say you see your step up out the car? Bullets to the car. Then I mean my way right by the ball. Yeah, your neck I me. I take it from you. So I, I look at that. Act glad it. Bullet by the in my. And I done that never do. And I'm at the end. No. And I'm at the end. No. Different color. Everything. Yeah, okay, messing up the lyrics on purpose. You can't copyright something you don't understand. Um, <laughs> I didn't say any of those words. I don't know what you're talking about. Okay, there was a, you know what I'm saying? Anyway, you guys, I'm sorry. But yes, Diamond, you're, you're a great rapper. But no, I have not seen you stand out amongst female rap, even when female rap is popping and hot, okay? All the girls are doing it. You know what I'm saying? All the girls, like, to me, the people I think of most popping right now in rap are all women. And I love that. And so for me, the fact that you're not popping right now is a testament to you not making music or not making good enough music. All right, because I feel like there's really no excuse at, at this point. But I do feel like y'all think y'all should be able to make like a couple of songs and that should be good enough. And that's not how any of this works. Like the girls that's out here eating, you know, really either come out with really, really great, great music like Doja Cat. Doja Cat only has like two albums. 
You know what I'm saying? And I think the, the first one was might have been a mixtape. Child, I don't even remember. But all I know is the music is so damn good and so memorable that she stands out. Sweetie just keeps getting really good samples. Okay? And, you know, she's fucking with Quavo and she's got a nice personality and she's half of something that isn't African. So, there you go. Okay? Things that will help you become a rapper even when you're not that talented. Sorry, sweetie. That's no disrespect. I really, really like you. But come on, sis. Um, but your video with, with, with Doja is amazing. Um, I love that. That's my best friend. I'm a real hot chick. Hey. That was a bop. But yeah, Diamond... If you were popping, then you'd definitely be popping right now. And you're not, okay? So I, I, I understand everybody wants to feel played by what Deb said, but it wasn't a lie. And that was Deb's point, okay? Nobody's done anything recently, okay? Nobody has come. I don't know anything, okay? If I don't know it, then it's probably not happening. And if it's happening and I don't know about it, then it doesn't matter. And that's really how it is. Like, people, you know, oh, I came out with something. You can look up Diamond shit. She got a few songs that came out, but... Did it make a dent anywhere? Did we hear it on the radio? Was there a video? Were they playing it on TikTok? Like, hello, bitch. <laughs> y'all be mad. Y'all be mad at Meg and them for creating these little stupid dances, but you hear their songs all over the place. Okay, that is how you make your songs heard now, not through the radio, through TikTok videos and dance challenges on social media. You gotta jump on the wave. Okay, get on the wave. So Deb went out into the parking lot and got in her car. Bow Wow and Brat left after they talked about how they can't believe how she acted, you know, and yeah, she was out of pocket. She was already in her feelings, okay? But somehow, Remarkable in her booty, you know, walks up to Deb's car, talks to her, gets her to get out of the car. They go back inside and it's Diamond Pimpin', Kai, Remarkable, and I believe Johnny Blaze shows up just as everything, you know, is going down. So she didn't even know what happened, all right? Um... But Deb and Diamond talk and, you know, she tells her that she wasn't trying to disrespect her. Um, Bow Wow says he's not doing this. And then, you know, that's that for that meeting. But Deb brings them back together in another studio and she wants to bring in Waka Flocka to listen to what they have recorded already. They had to climb up a lot of stairs, y'all. It was a stairway to heaven. All right on high. Me and you, me and you. Put your hand on my shoulder. Walk with me. Come on, baby. Love me. Ooh, 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 ooh. Sorry, I had to do it. Um, step by step nine. Had to. Okay. So once everybody gets up all of these damn stairs, because it was a struggle, Kai gets up and raps the song that he and Johnny and them worked on. Okay. Uh Waka then says it's still a little too cliche and that they need to like shorten it up and put like a, a little breakdown on there or some shit like that. And I feel like you could definitely listen to Waka. Waka knows how to make a good song. But I also feel like it's funny that somebody who, you know, made a song about drug dealing music and, you know, just is basically like cliche hood nigga shit. But then you want to call this, you know, cliche positive shit. Like you're cliche too, son. Like you weren't always out of the box. Like at some point you became generic. <laughs> okay. But you do go hard in the paint. So I would, I would take your advice for sure. But I would also keep in mind to do my own thing. You know what I'm saying? But either way, I think Kai did great. He got up and performed it. Everybody seemed to be, you know, like, all right, all right, all right. This worked out. This worked out. Remarkable asked Deb to help her deal with the Ayana situation when Deb gets in the car again. I said, you're going to get tired of chasing this lady out to her car. Okay. But um, Deb says that, you know, she likes the growth. She sees the growth. She likes the growth. Okay. Um, so Brett got this bubble pod for her and Jessica while they're getting work done on their house. And she tells her about what happened with Deb. And Brett, once again, is talking about how she doesn't want to work with Johnny Blaze. And I just kind of feel like Johnny Blaze is one of the most exciting people to work with on this project, to be honest, if not the. And it's solely because she's so damn talented. And I've seen her come up with things. And I feel like Brett is just kind of being a punk about this because 
the brat, like I have said before, knocked somebody over the head with a bottle and ruined her career. So I just kind of feel like you've been in that space before. And just because you had to, you know, get your ass put in jail to calm down does not mean that you're better than somebody. So your lack of understanding and patience for Johnny Blaze is kind of annoying because somebody had to show you patience when your ass got out of jail for knocking that lady over the head. Jessica says that they all need to talk. And I, I can tell that Jessica tries to soften Brett when Brett wants to be a Brett. Um, so that's her position in Brett's life, like trying to get her to open up and not be so guarded. Deb and Waka go to the bookstore and she tells him about the dope idea to do the We Are The World, you know, S song. And he says it's too cliche. Waka tells her that she has to learn how to handle folks a little bit better and she doesn't need to be so defensive anymore. You know, she's used to being a gangster, which is another reason why I think this whole Trump situation is hilarious because you want to talk about, you know, what about black on black crime? I'm like, you mean the crime that you was doing in the 90s when you was getting the money so that you could help everybody get on and become starers and shit? I, I, whatever, Deb. I just, <laughs> girl, okay? Like just, mm. but anyway, of course, He's going to come through to the studio and help them out, like I said. So Ayana has a chef making a dinner for her and her girl when Deb calls about the Remarkable situation. And for somebody that doesn't care, Ayana has a lot of venom for Remarkable. I don't care. I'm tired of talking about this girl. Then why is your attitude so stank about it? Like, I don't get it. If it's not that big of a deal, if you don't know her, why are you talking about her every scene? And I understand they're asking you, but at the end of the day, you seem hella bothered by somebody that you don't seem to really know like that i mean just have the conversation and get over it like you're on a television show they tell me that you have anger issues i don't really care get over it like get over it deb says remarkable would really like to talk to her and just kind of you know put the whole situation to bed um but she says she wants to talk to a whole lady and to her dad first and see how they feel about the situation and i'm like because you can't make a decision on your own okay fine Okay, I'm sorry. So I confused that last time and I don't feel like going back to like edit it out and edit it right and all of that. So basically, I, I put the two times together. Deb had got everybody besides Brett and Bow Wow to come back to the studio at the beginning of the episode to apologize to them for how she was feeling, but she overheard what they were saying and they still decided to move forward with the song, right? Okay. And Kai had actually written a little snippet during that time and he wrapped it during that time and pimping and diamond and everybody was sitting there listening to it bobbing their heads so from that time we come to this time with us with the stairs and all of that you know what i'm saying in the stairway to heaven i want to keep all of that in this video <laughs> okay i'm sorry i got a little bit confused but i couldn't tell whether i had mixed my notes or whether i had confused it in my head i'm sorry y'all growing up in poppy land like i said not that entertaining so i'm in and out on it i'm sorry okay but either way i was there they they climbed up the stairs they got inside remarkable got there first they played the song with johnny blaze waka comes through kai wants to fuck on remarkable and johnny blaze which we get it it's a whole lot of ass in the room i understand but still let's focus on the music good sir let's focus on the music they play the song johnny sings the hook kai raps on the song and it was really nice it sounded good i like the beat um, I think Kai, like I said, is very talented, like, and it showed through with him getting up and rapping and performing a song like he had something to prove more than everybody else. And I think him doing what he did showed that he was up for the challenge and Lili was very excited for him and proud of him. Like it, it was a bop. And I don't know if y'all know, I mentioned it, I think in a panel, but Lili and Kai have both hit me up in my DMs and I was super duper excited about it. Um, because I'm such a big fan of SWV and I'm such a big fan of Lili's. Like, I love her and I'm happy for them. And, you know, shout out to them. Hey, y'all. Okay, so Deb. Deb was hurt by a comment against Trump in the song, but she put her feelings to the back burner, which lets y'all know even more so that that shit was just for a storyline. Get out of my facial with the bullshit, Deb, okay? Um, but she likes the song. She thinks it's really good. This is when Waka tells everybody for the second time in the episode that the shit is cliche. And like I said, they need to cut it and put a hook and all of that type of shit. All right. Then we see at the end of the episode, the brat, all of her accessories. Okay. All of the shit in her hair and security and Jessica and, <laughs> and then her cousin, the producer. Like, why would you show up to talk to Deb with an entourage? So off rip, Deb is feeling kind of on the defense because you didn't showed up with plus people. If she would have just showed up 
with Jessica, I think it would have been different. And I understood why Jessica was there to keep her open because Brad is so on one. But in all honesty, I feel like Jessica didn't even really help this situation. Even though Deb admitted that she was on one when they sat down to talk, I think Brad just went off on a tangent about how Deb doesn't listen to her and that's why she don't want to work with her. And, it, you know, they rewind back to when they were trying to work together for that boot camp and she wanted Andrea Kelly to be involved. And because the Brad had some alliance to Robert Kelly, she didn't want Andrea to be a part of it and was on bullshit. And I didn't want that messy shit. And, I, and I'm just like, you know, Brad is just hella close minded to people when she is a problematic person herself. You've been in jail. You've had issues in the past, your damn self. And it seems as if you want to like, like distance yourself from everybody out of fear that they're gonna get their issues on you and it's just like bitch you got your own set of issues chill out at the end of the day you're on a reality show on we tv stop being so problematic all the damn time brett like she's problematic her damn self so like it's just real annoying to me how she responds to people but anyway you know that's her prerogative i don't you know care that much but it's just aggravating if i'm gonna be pointing out anything on this show i'll point out how one of my faves acts like a fucking brat all the time and lives up to her name even in her 40s with these types of thighs and ass okay wobbling around with her and her thick thigh and ass having old lady just wobbling around and you know being a big ass brat i'm over it um but yeah deb is taking aback to the fact that she can't finagle Brad into hearing her out because she's not used to Brad telling her no I guess Brad feel like bitch the pandemic has made me feel like telling people no even more so now my life might be in danger me and my thick thighs might not be able to keep our lives oh uh -uh. <laughs> staying home okay no Deb no 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 so yeah that was basically everything that happened on Growing Up Hip Hop. I hope that y'all enjoyed the review, even though I mixed it up a bit. Um, but I love y'all. Um, I appreciate y'all for watching. Y'all know I'm trying to reach 100,000 subscribers. This is my 10th year on YouTube, so I would really appreciate you guys sharing the video, liking the video. Um, telling your people about me. You can also become a member of my channel. You can become a Patreon of my channel. That's an either or situation. Um, but thank you so much to all of my new members, all of the new people to the Discord. I love everybody for supporting me. I appreciate you. I hope you have a beautiful Valentine's Day and I will see y'all later.